Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have an opportunity to work on a reel that Matt sent in. This is an Okuma reel. It's the Komodo SS. The SS, I believe, stands for stainless steel. It's a seven ball bearing reel, relatively low speed for these. It's a 6.4 to 1. It's got a nice smooth operation and uh, Matt sent it to me for just a basic service. Uh, these reels should be serviced on an annual basis regardless of whether they're they're tight, noisy, uh, something broken, etc. Uh, you want to prevent that. You want to have your reel ready to go at all times and the best way to do that is keep it serviced on a regular basis. Well we're going to show you how to take this reel apart, how it's made, how it's serviced and uh, well we'll get it back out to Matt to go fishing again. We're going to start by uh, removing the uh, side plates and uh, well, that'll tell us how to get the rest of the reel off, generally speaking. I want to start by taking off the, the handle. And as I do, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button to uh, see what I'm posting and when I'm posting it. I work on all kinds of fishing reels. This one's a low-profile bait caster. I just finished a, a big lever drag reel for ocean fishing. And uh, the next one in might be a vintage spinning reel. You just never know. That kind of makes the, the channel a little fun. You're essentially looking over my shoulder in my shop on the, the stuff that comes in. And, well, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be. So it's uh, got an entertainment value all by itself. All right, well, I'm going to take the the star adjuster off while I'm at it. There's a little click mechanism behind that as I'm looking at uh, the schematic that should just be kind of a wing setup. Yep. And when you do this I encourage you to do a couple of things. The first thing if you're not familiar with the reel and it's the first one I've worked on like this uh, then you want to go out and get the schematic. They're available largely on the internet and uh, you can find them regularly Print it out. That'll give you a burst diagram of what the reel looks like. And then as you're doing this, take pictures along the way. Uh, you know, use your cell phone, use a, a camera, uh, take a video if you like. Uh, I do the videos, but of course there's a secondary usage for that by posting it onto YouTube to show you how to do it yourself. But uh, you can run a video along there to let you know uh, uh, what your sequences are, that you're removing the pieces, and uh, how they eventually come back together again as a reference point. Well, you want to re you want to loosen this one because that's holding your case in. And then once that you loosen that up, you should be able to turn the case up and then pull that out to remove that. That's going to remove the spool and the back side of this. Now when you're servicing that, this is a trim ring. It's going to hold the brakes here. You don't need to, s to do anything with that other than to make sure it's clean. Just wipe it down. And underneath that you have a Teflon gear that's driving your worm gear. Here's your worm gear over here. And I don't recommend uh, lubricating or uh, oiling or anything with the Teflon gear. It's self-lubricating. It can be left alone. Uh, if you want to put a spot of oil in there, you can. There's two bearings on here. There's one on each side of the spool. I guess we can start an informal count to find out where all those seven bearings are. I'd like to spin them to make sure that they're working right. They worked fine in the test. And uh, well, just oil them up and set that aside. So when I set pieces aside, I put them into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container, but that bottom of that parts tray lets me know where those pieces and parts are when it's time to reinstall. I'm just noticing now we're missing the uh, uh, a screw that's the cap for that little burring in the handle there. And uh, I guess you can operate it without it and I guess there's a story behind why it's missing. All right, I wanted to take that spool off because most of the time when you see a single screw holding the case in on the one side, it means that there's other screws behind. And if you look inside there, you're going to see two Phillips head screws that have to be removed in order to remove that gear side plate. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to use a number one uh, head from a uh, Phillips head screwdriver and we'll go ahead and take these out. When I take the screws out I like to leave them on my table just to make sure that they're the same size. It's not unusual to find that the screws are multi-sized 
And if you put one in the wrong spot on these bait casters, usually it interferes with something. So if you find out that you have a, a long and a short, and you try and put the long one where the short was, well, generally it's going to be bumping into something, and uh, your reel's not going to work properly. Those two screws that came out of the inside of this are the, uh, the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'll just find a corner of my um, part tray to put those two pieces in. I was just looking for a micro driver. I think I have it on my table here. I'm looking for the micro driver because there's a shield here that uh, I'm also going to want to remove because you can't service the pole without taking that shield off. Again, there's an awful lot of pieces and parts on the modern bait caster reels. So you definitely want to take the pictures. You want to be patient and you want to take your time when you're doing the service because it's real easy to lose small pieces and parts like this. And well, they're kind of hard to find to replace them. All right, we should have just one more based on what I'm seeing on the scheme, the schematic that needs to come off. That would be this one here. And these, well, this reel hasn't been serviced in a while. I can feel the, the sediment or whatever it is in, inside this making these kind of tight and harder to remove. And I'm not sure if Matt's using these in the salt water or not, but we saw on the one set of screws that they were kind of encrusted. You need to be careful with these. Sometimes maybe just a little shot of the penetrating there, penetrating oil there will help loosen it up and kind of guide it out a little bit easier. You don't want to strip the heads on these. So take your time. Real repair is about patience and as I like to say a sense of humor has nothing to do with speed. Speed kills. All right. The one on the side looks to be the same size as the other two and now I think we should be able to remove this oh nope, they hit another one here if you if you do something like I just did and it's not coming easy stop and then look as chances are there's at least one more laying around there and here it is on this side if you try to force anything you might crack the case just take your time. Uh, let's see if it comes off now. There you go. Now it's coming off. So you have to remove the, the handle on these. I'm, I'm pretty sure this bar is going to slide out as well. Okay, just work it. There we go. All right. So I guess there's been a little residual something there. And uh, now what I like to do is keep it up as I'm doing this because I don't want to lose Wow, that's been sticky. The orientation inside, and we can see it's time for service. There's just a lot of, of dirt and debris on the back side of this. There's a lot of dirt and debris on the case, and that's, uh, that's what the service is going to be about. Uh, we do have an instant anti-reverse here. I want to spray down and clean the case, but I want to keep that penetrating oil off of the anti-reverse. You don't want to get oils and that on it. Some folks think that you're supposed to oil that clutch. You don't. That's a friction driven clutch. And while well, oil eliminates friction, which is most of the time that's a good idea inside of fishing reels, but not on the roller clutch. Well, here's another bearing here. I'm kind of lost count. Let's call that three or four if we're counting that handle bearing. But get all that old salt and debris and everything cleaned up. And I use a variety of, of tools to clean out. I'm using a cotton swab here. That nice works nice to get into the crevices and all. And uh, that should clean that up nicely. I'm also going to use a dry, another one. I go through a lot of these just to wipe down the inside of that uh, roller clutch. We're in good shape there. I'm going to oil the bearings. I oil bearings. I don't uh, don't grease them. This, this this bearing is a shielded bearing. We'll just uh, I'm going to take those two big pieces out of my case.
case. I'm not going to lose those. Just lay them up here. All right, good place to take a picture. And the reason why you want to take the picture is you're going to take most of these parts off, and so you'd like to know what the starting point is. This is the collar or the sleeve for the anti-reverse clutch, and I want to make sure that's dry as well. Then we have a series of drag washers and the like. But before I go too far, I'm going right here and I'm pulling these two little springs out. Those are yoke springs. Remember what I said before, I was holding it up tight or upright. It's very easy to turn that over and all of a sudden have chaos when those springs go flying. Well, this is your top cap drag washer. It's got a lot of dirt on it. These are, I believe, carbon tex washers. You don't do anything with carbon tex washers. They're a hard washer and they're non permeable. These are relatively flexible. They have grease on them, and that's okay in this, this particular application. There should be a couple of them. Take a, take a picture as you take the pieces off so that you know which way they go. And again, a lot of this service is about cleaning it, inspecting the pieces and parts, making sure that they're, they're clean. You can see that there's an awful lot of dirt and debris and the like inside this one. I'm going to clean it up as best you can. Stay away from the abrasives if, if possible. You don't want to scar it up. And then when you're working on the main gear, make sure that all the teeth in the main gear are clean. And I'm going to use a, a hard bristle brush for that. Pull that off. So it's interesting, I found that some of the parts suppliers for Qu uh, Quantum support the bait casting reels, but they don't support the parts for the spinning reels, or at least the low-end spinning reels. All right, here's what you have. You have three of these uh, donuts, if you will, or drag washers, and you have six in total. When you go to nest the main gear back, you're going to start with a, a fabric washer, and then the full size keyed washer, that's the one that has the rectangle in the center, and you're going to use the next donut if you will, then it's going to be one with the two points on it, that's called an eared washer, that's going to go next, then the last of the drag washers, and then this big cap washer, the very thick one goes on the top. That's I did that to show you, but we can't put that on quite yet. We have a click ratchet here, and this is the fail-safe anti-reverse dog. When you're spinning your reel, well, I probably can take that out, that's the pinion gear. When you're spinning your reel, it's going to stay off. When you want to spin back, that should click back in place. So this one's not doing that. We're going to have to figure out why that's not doing that. We're going to pull the click ratchet off and the anti-reverse dog. And usually what happens with this, I think I see right away what's happening with this. There's some sand or something else in there that's clogging this channel. It's not allowing that to work properly. I'm going to just lay that to the side for a moment. I want to clean these pieces up. So I have the bottom end of this formation. You can see all of that stuff which was preventing it from moving. This is on the back side of it now. And that should work properly now that the debris is out of there. So what he was working on essentially is he was running off the AR collar, the, the roller clutch but did not have the fail-safe mechanism in place. That's a hard one to, to know that you're not, it's not operating. Underneath here, we've just taken off our pinion gear. We've serviced the main gear. We'll just take a look at this one for a moment. And you want to do the same thing. This is clean, so you don't need to do anything with that. It's a little bit of buildup. I'm feeling the sand in here. I'm just feeling the grit on my fingers. So you need to be careful to make sure this gets cleaned as best you can. Sand is, well, it's like sandpaper. It's going to be an abrasive and it is going to wear down your reel if it's not removed and cleaned. Okay, 
got that. I was just looking for the ramps. The ramps are going to go towards the face or the spool side of the, of the reel. So when you go to reinstall, the gear side comes here. Those ramps go in. And this interfaces with the main gear. Put a little bit of grease on that and set that aside. It's probably going to fall out again. It's really held in place by those two um, studs on here. And then I want to just service I believe that as I'm looking at this that there's a bearing underneath here so let's go ahead and take that off and while I do that I'm going to flush the rest of the dirt out of this with the penetrating oil. Just going to let that ride for a moment. I got two things I want to do here. I want to remove the the nose bezel here for the that's the wrong one of course uh, so that I can service the line guide. And I want to remove that gear shaft so that I can service the bearing underneath. Okay, I already started a little pocket with the, th the two other screws from this bezel, so I'll put this one right in my parts tray. So I have the four of those together. This should just lift off now. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to flush the worm gear. And I find penetrating oil is good for that. It's a degreaser. And it also helps to just, well, flush it. <laughs> it uh, you can push that in and out. And uh, there's the dirt that we've seen in there. It generally pulls it away. Let's go down onto the paper towel there. And I think that's what we'll do next. We'll get it. And replace that paper towel. Chris is probably sitting in the background wondering when I'm going to go do that. Alright, there's a pole in here now. We might be able to just have it fall out like it did. I was wondering if it would because, well, we've seen a lot of dirt in that there. Clean off the dirt or on the cylinder and then there's usually a little bit of dirt on the shoulders here. So just run a pick or something across there and knock that off as well. If you don't, what's going to happen is that's going to clog and eventually you're going to get to the point where the track that it rides in on the worm gear is going to get clogged with the dirt and well it's just not going to work properly. Alright, we're going to just take a moment to put that back in the cylinder. Little shot of oil there. There's a small washer that when we seat this it's going to go in but it has to be seated first. Keep your finger on the pole, turn it and you'll feel it pull in when it's in the track. Then put that little washer back on. Another squirt of oil doesn't hurt. And then put the cap on. This is plastic cap, plastic threads. Please, just do this manually because if you start using a screwdriver and it is cross-threaded, what you're going to do is snap one or the other and then it's off to the parts bins See if you can find somebody who uh, is supplying that for this, this reel. Notice you also have this pin. It's falling out. That belongs in the hole here. The bezel will hold that in place when it's back on. And once you did that, just turn your worm gear. Make sure that the line guide is driving properly. Okay, that's that. So I'm going to take that bezel right now. I don't like to keep a lot of pieces off of a reel if I can get them back on. So this is a good time to go reinstall the bezel. That goes under the top. Press down. And now we got those four little screws there. And if I want to say something's going to make me nervous, it's those four little screws because while well, they're small and little and they probably bounce a, a long ways if you uh, drop them on your desk or anywhere else. So I use a dab of grease as a glue. I try to steady my hand so that I don't knock it around on the way in. Okay, we'll go over the other side, put that other side back on. There's two more of these. See, one of those already fell out there, so it always makes me a little bit 
weary when I'm working with very small pieces and parts. As I mentioned before, you have this rod that uh, locks in on the case. I just noticed as I was trying to seat this puzzle that the rod had popped out again. All right, one more little screw there. Fortunately, it didn't go far. So let's see if we can get that one back. That's how you service your line guide. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and it uh, has you stumped. Maybe you've done something in servicing the reel and it uh, it's not behaving properly after you've serviced it. If you uh, leave those questions in the comments section, I will try to answer them for you. All right, well, that penetrating oil cleaned up all of that residual uh, dirt and debris and the like very nicely. I noticed that there's a little bit on here, which is where that uh, anti-reverse dog is going to ride as well. That seems like it was problematic all around. We, we saw the, uh, the bad dirt on it. We saw the sand inside of that one piece. I want to make sure that that track is nice and clear there. There's one more piece here. So you can't over clean a reel. So just make sure you take your time when you're doing this. And if I can find that dog right now. Just going to put it on here, make sure it swings freely. Well, as I did that, it just picked up some more, some more of that dirt. So what I'm trying to do now is just make sure that it moves in and out nicely because that's how that anti-reverse dog is going to ride. And it's pretty apparent that the issue here with that dog was that it uh, was stuck with whatever debris was inside the reel here. All right, let's take this one shaft off here. I do believe that there's a bearing underneath here, so I do want to address that before we start putting this back together again. There's two more screws here. Again, take a picture at this point. You know, it's not unusual for something to go boing. There's a spring over here. You don't need to remove the trip lever mechanism as part of a general service, but if you do, take a picture. That'll show you the orientation and where that spring goes. Maybe it's the issue that you're having with your reel has to do with that. All right, those two screws are here. And I'm just trying to find something to lever that out. It should come out, but it's it's tight. So again, just patience, a little bit of effort, and we'll come out. And we do have a burring and a bunch of dirt. That seems to be a common theme. Now I got to be careful here because of the two screws on this piece. Spin the burring, make sure that it's working okay, and then oil the burring and then reinstall. I'm just noticing that there's two wings here. I probably should have taken that picture and should have followed my own advice, if you will, because I almost had that going in backwards. And it's almost as hard getting it in as it was getting it out. Take those two screws and put those back in. And now you can rest comfortable that that's been serviced. So what are we up to, four or five bearings now? I've kind of lost the count. And they're all in decent places, so I, I don't have any problem. What I really like to see on these reels is a, a bearing on each side of the spool whether it's in the case or on the spool. And uh, that usually is 
sufficient enough. Give it a turn, make sure that it's turning nicely. Now we can start rebuilding the reel. We're going to take that click ratchet, that goes next. And we have it cleaned up and we have that anti-reverse dog on there. Now this has got a rectangular uh, set to it. It needs to fit properly on the uh, shaft there, the gear shaft. Let's grab the click ratchet, load the anti-reverse dog, bring it over the top, center it on the post, <coughs> and then center it here to make sure it's flush. Now this should pull in. That's, that's what it should have been doing all along. It should have been pulling up and down, but that was impaired by the, uh, the dirt. Okay, the washer goes on next. And now we have that whole gear stack, and if I pop it out, we'll just redo it again. Now I'm going to leave that gear proud because the next thing I want to do is put this pinion gear in first. So again, the ones that's got the ramp faces in, the slotted section faces towards the spool. Let's, let's bring that up a little bit more. And these two go over the post. When it's seated, you're going to find that there's an angular piece here that's going to, well, it's going to be flush. Once you do that, you can push down on the main gear. We can take our uh, gear spacer or the uh, inner, inner collar for the and uh, it, it, AR clutch, whichever you want to call it. The two pieces that I forget the most go next, which is the two springs for the yoke. So when you operate the free spool release, it's going to push it out, and then these springs are going to push it back in after it trips. Okay, that's the inside of the reel. I'm just looking around one more time for good housekeeping to make sure that I got it. And now all we want to do is put the cap back on. You want to locate the hole for the pin. That's right up here. Bring this over the top. And just bring it in evenly. Make sure everything seats nice and easily. Make sure you have a nice, tight, firm seal on this that's not being interfered with with the uh, any kind of pieces and parts hanging out. Okay, these are the screws now for the case. I want to get at least one of these in. Remember, we have two in the back, we have one on the side. This one seems to be the one where I can hold it with hand strength. and uh, get it started so that I can release the, the hand strength to go on and put the other pieces in. Okay, then we have the one in the back side here, right here. Let's go put that in. And all four of these screws are the same, so it doesn't matter which one goes in which position. We do know that there's two more that go inside the cavity where the spool is going to rest. That will be next. So let's do that one. I'll probably drop these about three or four times. obviously can go at whatever uh, sequence you like on these. You can complete rebuilding the face of the gear side or you can go over to the non-gear side. It really doesn't matter much. What matters is that 
out when you get done, your porch tray is empty. All right, we have this, so let's go ahead and do the next part here, which is all of these tension washers that go. Remember what I did here, I stacked these. These are bent, don't, don't attempt to unbend them. And right now I've, I've said to myself, well, I think maybe I've lost the sequence here, so what goes? And just looking at the schematic now, it tells me that this brown washer is next. And then what I call the uh, the wing is next. And then we have two washers on top of that. And a flat washer. And then we have the star adjuster. So that's the way they came out. We're going to take our star adjuster now and tighten that down. Again, another exercise you want to just be careful with. You don't want to cross thread this. The other thing, you want to make sure that the, you get this point tucked in under. If you don't hear this starting to click, you've misinstalled it. Stop. Back it off and do it again. Okay, that's all back together. Next step then was our handle. I believe this one was there because I'm looking at the way the marks are. And I guess the question here, I want to look at the handle. And I've put the handle on before that little shim washer there. The cap. Again, please hand, hand thread them. It's real easy on these posts to not have them thread properly. And if you start cranking away, one or the other is going to get stripped. And well, it doesn't lead to anything good. That's the issue I'm having here. It's just going on a little bit incorrectly. And sometimes you can catch that thread, just I think I just caught it there, by reversing it and letting that, that starter thread uh, seat properly. All right, we'll a 10 minute timer coming up here. I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to turn it right back on. I have an editor in here that if I don't pay attention to it, it stops and I go on talking and repairing and well, the video stops and there's, and there's a missing segment to it. So I apologize for that, but let's just do that right. We have the tie off here. If it doesn't line up absolutely correctly, just grab the, the nut with your wrench and make that little extra turn there. I have a little bit of salt or something caught on the threads there, so we'll fix that, put this in, and now the business side of the reel after the screw gets tightened down is essentially done. Just keep going at it, take it in, take it out, eventually you will line it up properly. All right, so we're good on that. Here we have our spool. We've oiled the bearings on the spool and wiped that shaft off there. There's a little bit of wear on there, interestingly enough. I'll just take a piece of 4 0 steel wool and see if we can't buff that out a little bit. There's some scarring going on there. I'm not sure if it's going to matter too much, but you can see that it's a, a rust color on the stainless shaft. I'm not sure what that was. That feels better. All right. When you go to install your spool, make sure that the braid is is tight. I'll put a rubber band on it if I can find one. Generally what happens is there's a piece of that braid that just doesn't want to cooperate. It kicks out, like this little tab here, gets stuck on the spool and loading in. 
and well traps the, the spool and becomes problematic. All right, we should be able to get this in. Just adjust my rubber band, try to keep that tag in. Bring that over and in. Here's our cover now. Bring it over, rotate it down. And now our issue here will be just tightening up this last knob. The bar goes all the way through and threads into the case. I'll hold fast on that side. And well, we can see how we did. Well, there we go. Make sure that your cast control works. That spins nice and easy. You have an adjuster here. You can back it off if you want it to spin faster. You can tighten it down. Spin slower. That should be adjusted to the weight of the lures. So, so I'll just set it where it's a nice cast. Make sure that it trips back. This one's ready to go fishing again, Matt. So uh, thanks for sending that in. I hope everybody's enjoyed this and learned a little bit about the, uh, the Okuma Komodo SS uh, bait casting fishing reel, how to take it apart, how to service it, some of the generics behind low profile bait casters, and most well, some of the things that are specific to this reel. Nice reel overall, just that uh, well, it needed service, it was a little bit dirty. So, to all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are appreciated. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day, whether you're fishing, on the water, or just uh, living life.